Mr. Holt? Mr. Holt? Friday the 13th, my lucky day. This is for you, Mr. Helt. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Broadbust. And that will be added to your bill, Mr. Helt. High time I left this paradise in the hills. <laughs> Friday the 13th. <laughs> this is going to be my lucky day. <laughs> Meneer Hout, meneer de Wit, wat gaan voor u? Wie is dit dapper generaal de Wit? Wie vecht zo dapper in Transvaal de Wit? Jou de Wit zal me dapper vecht vandaag, want ik is op mijn stukken. En, het is mijn gelukkige dag vandaag. Vrijdag, die dertiende. Hm. Oh, nee, 
Nej, men det är det. Ja, Mario. Ja, Mario. Ja, Mario. Ja, Mario. Ja, nej, meneer. Goeiemorgen, meneer. Het is jammer... alweer laat. En een bezigheid? Uh, nog niet, maar, uh, maar die toekomst is, uh, is rustkleurig. Kijk, Hout. Het is nu precies drie maanden dat je laatst die bezigheid ingebring het. En wat maak je met daar die paar beauty spots op jouw bakjes? Maar meneer, mijn oor is een beetje uh, gevoelig als gevolg van die laatste studeer. Studeer? Ja, die. Mijn meneer is zout super salesmanship college in Chicago. En voor een paar maanden is ik gewoon dokter hulp. Kerel, je voor jou zo, het is daar net één dokter. En dat is werk. Wat is dit met jullie kerels? Jij en Van der Merwe, Nell en Brown en Wilson. Wat are you, mens of mouses? Meneer bedoelt... Ik je nog voor jou drie dagen. Dat is tot woensdag om mij te beindruk. Weet jij hoeveel babas daar elke dag geboren wordt? Weet jij hoeveel mensen daar elke dag doodgaan? Weet je hoeveel ongelukken daar elke dag plaatsvindt? En allemaal, allemaal dat assurantie nodig. Toe man, loop me gaan de moederkar en beoefen jou. Studies. En onthou, dat is in geheim. Elk kind in jullie leven is bang voor iets. Wat moet de duivel? Ik ben maar net zo of meneer ook bang is, meneer. Zeg jij trap? De trap? Hout, ik wil jou gans bewijs. Bel hier die kerel voor tien uur. En als jij niet daar bezigheid krijgt nie, dan is je ook niks werd nie. Dankie meneer. Goed, meneer. T156666. Is dat niet meer de server in die nummer nie? Oké, okay, James Bond. 007700. <tie> The approach to the unknown customer is sociologically determined. Yes? Uh, sir, can I, uh, can I interest you in... I only buy wholesale. Meneer Egbonet. Ik zie dat al reeds te laat. Shame. Uh. Als je wel eens verkopen. Nee, dank je. Niks houden. Nee, dank je. Niks houden. Schakel de. I wonder if I could possibly interest you in that. Uh, well, I think I can... Oh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tell her for Friday the 13th. Parking on a corner. And where else then? I think I can my car and my tas around there.
You in trouble too? Yes. Can you help me? Uh, after ten o'clock? Yes. All right, Doug. Give us a bob. I do to give us a bob. Sorry, I haven't got a fee. Please. Could you give me some change? Well, I... I... Please, I'm desperate. I've got to phone my oh, father. Sorry, I've only got one left. I gave the tramp the other one. Clever man. Have a look at my car, won't you? You're already late. But, Daddy... Well, leave the car, lock it and take a taxi. My word, you are a clever man, aren't you? You know, I must say, you're the only girl... It's about the five cents. Give me your address and I'll send it to you. Once upon a Friday, he came my way. Once upon a Friday, my lucky day. He was just a stranger then to me. I should have seen. Morgen. Ich muss schon das noch probieren, oder? Und nun? Wie geht dann auf Ihr Parage schlucken? Oh, der Wehr, das ist Franz für die Wett. Für mich noch Uitskop. Nicht um, dass ich Verkoopsiel kann studieren, weil ich mich Uitsmeid uit auf die Straat. Hm, das ist nicht das Heine. Aber um Rai Broadbass, dass ich für Ochtend meine finale Final Note ist gegeben. Ik zou graag willen helpen, maat. Maar geld kan ik je niet leren. Is je niet die klap? Doe Stevie, dat is niet die geld niet, man. Maar ik weet niet. Wat is allemaal mij verkeerd? Ander kerels. Je weet, Harry. Zoals ik nou die wereld hier, hier die glas zien. Zo zien bij je mensen gewoonlijk die leven. Een beetje misvormd, troebel, onduidelijk. Net zoals hier die glas. Geboor van buiten en hol van binnen. Kijk mooi. Jij ziet net die glas, ne? Dit is omdat die glas leeg is. Maar zin nou maar ik kwijt iets in die glas. Nou verander die binnenkant, niet waar niet. Die glas zelf wordt functioneel. Bij je van ons zoekt de vergeefs naar ons eigen functie in die leven. Ja. Als het maar zo makkelijk was, is het net vol te maken met vloeistof. Ja, dat klinkt wel tegend. Maar jij gebruikt stof waarvan ons allemaal niet slagoffer is. Ja, glas is ziekte van die eeuw. Dat is een verpersoonlijking van alle verraaiere en valsheid. Dat skei zonder om te skei. En dat meng zonder om te meng. Ja, jij hebt jouw functie gevind. Jij is gelukkig. Denk je dat dat altijd zo? 
een boer, een matroos, enzovoorts, enzovoorts. Maar één dag het ik achtergekomen dat allemaal om mij bezig is om iets te verbergen. Je weet, dat onder een masker weg te steken. En elk een draa masker. Ja, een man met een baard of zelfs een vrouw met haar gezicht en meer. <laughs> ik ben zo brood, Bas, maar ook een masker <laughs> Ja, nee. Ik heb voor mij toe ook een masker uitgezoekt. Ik heb het geprobeerd. En dit het gepast. Binnen een paar maanden was ik in staat om je te kop. En nu is ik onafhankelijk en gelukkig. En om gelukkig te blij, heb ik jullie klap die Seven Masks genoemd. Seven. Een gelukkige mystieke nummer. En mij. Masker. Mijn eigen mombakjes. Ja, nee, je is gelukkig. Ik is maar een sukkelaar. Maar ook gelukkig. Toch niet. Want jullie zes maanden van zwart met een zoute college. Het ook niks gehaald, niet. Dertig maanden, dertig lessen. En nu? Nu zit ik zonder een job. En wanneer word je dan komkastige dokter in salesmanship? Hm? Jij spot me mij, hm? Once upon a Friday, he came my way. Once upon a Friday. He is the, he is the, ex doctor, ex doctor. Now my old man joined the club, and now we give ear masker and a title. Of het nou erg is of niet, zolang ze net zelf daarom geloof. <coughs> Cornelia, ontmoet een oude vriend van mij, dokter Harry Holt. Hallo. Maar Harry, ga zitten en lees dan eens hoe Cornelia zingt. Uh, zing maar. Once upon a Friday, he came my way. Once upon a Friday, my lucky day. Stranger than you see, I should have seen the danger then. You see, once upon a Friday, we said goodbye. Always I'll remember that day and sigh that this fleeting affair. We shared, slipped away once upon a Friday. Was my unlucky day. Yeah. Ik heb een nieuwe masker gekregen, jij hebt Trevor niet hoor. Als dus jij was, ik als om een dadelijke job. Maar dan moet ik gaan werken, want ik word laat en ik moet geld gaan verdienen. Nou ja, do Nee, ik stap zo nog samen. Post gaan. Oeh! Jij lacht nou weer om. Ja, want dan jouw masker hoor. Oké, okay, jong, ik heb die Trevor te paard met lekker gevonden. Tot ziens! Nu heb ik een tweeling! So well did I. Are you following me? This car needs a mechanic. Oh, what am I going to do? My father's already in a dreadful rage because I'm late. We have a serious illness at home and my father's dreadfully worried. Let me give you a lift today. We can phone the garage and get them to fetch your car. Oh, thank you. I must be at home when the doctor comes.
My name is... Uh... How do you do? You've forgotten these books. Peggy, you know they were waiting for you. The doctor may arrive in any moment now. And who the hell is this? Father, I'm sorry, but my car broke down. And this is the gentleman who... Who is he? Oh, this is... I, I, I'm Doctor... Oh, but my dear, Doctor, why didn't you say so? I'm so pleased that you've come. This is wonderful. Here you are. <laughs> yes, here I am. Uh, surprising, isn't it? I am Patrick van der Bill. You've already met my daughter, I see. Yes. Uh, yes, but she's, she's so exhausted from trying to fix her car and entertaining me that... Just you sit down and relax for a while, Miss van der Mill. Don't say anything. Just sit back and relax. Uh, well, Mr. van der Mill, um, uh, how do you feel? That depends on you, doesn't it? Yes, of course. Um, and... Uh, and... Well? Oh, I, I think it's very serious. Yes, uh, but not hopeless. Well, it depends on you. Chin up, Mr. Van der Mill, just chin up. As soon as I know what this is all about... But we I... told your receptionist, didn't she tell you? My receptionist? <laughs> uh, typical. Typical. If you could only see her, you'd understand. She told me nothing except that I was to come here. But you can rely on me. Well, uh, it's getting late. And, but uh, we really only expected you at two o'clock. At two o'clock. Oh. Oh, that's good. Yes, that is good. Now, if it wouldn't be too inconvenient to, uh, <laughs> what these receptionists don't get <laughs> up to. <laughs> but I've come and that's the most important thing. And to think that you've gone to all that trouble just to come here. I can't tell you how grateful I am to you. Oh, but it's only natural. Who do you, uh, who, who do you take me for? <laughs> who do you think I am? <laughs> oh, come on, who do you think I am? <laughs> well, I don't have to tell you that. The whole of South Africa knows who you are and what you've done. You are the best-known specialist in the country. Well, I'm glad you have faith in me, but no more formalities. <laughs> now, come on, Mr. Vanderbilt, tell me, what is wrong? Ah? 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 Uh, doctor, uh, the most disturbing thing is that uh, outwardly there's nothing wrong, but inwardly. Well, no, go on. It's terrible. No, it is not terrible. As long as I'm present, nothing is ever terrible. Everything is fine. Well, how one can look so well and yet be so ill. Ill? Well, we'll see about that. Now, may I see the patient alone? Uh, Peggy? Call Millie. Millie? <laughs> Millie, call Master Frank, please. Uh, yes, Millie, that's right. Please go and call Master Frank. <laughs> uh, does he know I'm coming? Naturally. And how do you inform him? This is most important. You must have said, Frank. Or, oh, my dear Frank. <laughs> yes, or, oh, my dear Frank. Uh, Frank, I said. Tomorrow, a man is going to call on you and help you. He is the best and the most famous specialist. Good, good. <laughs> Did you mention my name? Naturally, naturally. I told him your name. Well, you heard me. Repeat exactly what you told him. Every detail could be very important in this analysis. So, Frank, tomorrow a man will come who will help you. The best and the most famous specialist. His name is... Yes, Frank, now. <sighs> Tell me, Mr. Vandermill, 
Does he suffer physically? Uh, no, he's only mentally ill. Oh, if it's a question of psychiatry, then I can handle it. Otherwise, I would have to consult with another specialist. To sleep, to dream in dreams are the answers. Uh, Nelly, my dear Frank, I don't have to tell you who this is in front of you. Yes, Pat, of course, we know. Welcome, Doctor. But, but why are you all so shy to call me by my name, Mr. Vandermill? Do tell them all who I am. When you tell me that this is Mrs. Vandermill and that this is... You, you can also tell them who I am. If you attach so much importance, Doctor, uh, Nelly, children, this is the... <laughs> I can see that your son is very seriously ill, Mr. Van der Mill, but I'm not happy. And until such time as you tell him exactly who I am, there is nothing much I can do. Because we must... Everybody must know everything about everybody else. <laughs> My dear doctor, of course I'll tell them who you are. Uh, this is the famous Dr. De Vries. Oh, thank you. And I want to be left alone with my friend Frank. We'll call for you. Chin up. Oh, there's one last thing, and it's most important. I must have absolute silence in the house. Don't allow anyone in. No matter who comes to the door, don't even answer the bell. I need absolute silence. Is that understood? Yes, Doctor. Doctor De Vries. Of course, Doctor. Uh, Doctor De Vries. But I, I would like you to know that money is no object. Money is not important if you can cure him. Oh, that's all right. Uh, in a half an hour, I'll know more and then I'll call you. So sit down. The patient sits and I walk up and down. That's my method. And now forget that the famous Dr. De Vries has been called in. Pretend that I'm not a doctor at all, but a good friend. A real friend to whom you can tell everything. But don't forget that you are ill. You are surprised? Yes, my friend. That's what I have said before. To sleep. To dream. In dreams lie all the answers. Now tell me. The patient speaks. I listen. Say nothing. That's my method. Well, for the last 14 days, Doctor, I keep watching myself. Well, just imagine. I'm sitting at my desk in the office, and suddenly somebody's standing next to me, watching me while I'm writing. And then I don't know which one I am. The one standing or the one sitting. And before I know which one I am, there's another one watching both of us. And that one is also me. And then I really don't know whether I'm the one at the desk or the one standing or the other one who's watching the second. And so it goes on. The fourth, the fifth, the sixth, every one of them is me. And then I begin to count. And the one who's counting is also me. And then another one who appears and watches me counting. And that one is also me. And I, I can't keep up with counting them all. That's what's happening to me, Doctor. <laughs> is that all? What do you mean, is that all? That's enough, isn't it? It's horrible, Doctor. Well, of course it's horrible. And from tomorrow it's going to become even worse. Tomorrow we put a mirror in front of you. Then there will be two sitting, two watching, and two counting. Right from the start, we'll double up. Then next week, we'll add another mirror. And then you will see yourself, alone, before the others can sit beside you. And so we will continue, until the one who does the counting won't be able to cope anymore. We'll continue like this for a while. Then we'll remove the first mirror, and later we'll remove the second one. We'll apply uh, decimalization. And when we're in the process of decimalization, we discover it to be the way, the means of reducing the counting, so that they will become less and less, until in the end, there will only be two of you at the desk. The Frank at the desk, and the Frank watching you. And later we may even decide whether we should remove him too, or whether we should leave the two of you together, in case you should get lonely. And uh, that's what's called psychoanalysis? 
Why not? Well, I don't understand anything at all. Well, that's good. That'll make the treatment so much easier. At least you won't be biased. Is my condition very bad, Doctor? Well, it's not too bad and uh, not too good either. Will the treatment take long? Well, it uh, won't be short. Then I uh, won't be able to go to work. God help you if you do. You're to see no one, talk to no one. Then I'm not responsible for what I say and do. Quite so. Completely irresponsible. But for how long? A long, very long time. We begin the treatment tomorrow. Will I be treated by you, Doctor? Would you like that? Well, of course. Ah, well, uh, um, on the other hand, um, oh, all right. I'll take care of the treatment myself. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Let me put it to you this way. Your case interests me especially. I am busy with a book, and your case will help me with my necessary research. Otherwise, I would only supervise your case. Although it disrupts all my arrangements, sir, but if you yourself personally attach a lot of importance that I should... Do you have faith in me? Do you feel after our short conversation that I should personally treat you? Oh, absolutely, Doctor. Good. Millie, please tell the family we're ready. Yes, Doctor. Uh... What are we going to do, Doctor? Just sit and count Franks all the time? Oh, no. But I don't know yet. I'll have to think about it. Analyze your case for my book. You still have lots to tell me. That is, um... That is psychoanalysis, as everybody knows. And there is something else which is also part of psychoanalysis. Something else, uh... <sighs> I'll tell you about that tomorrow. What time is my appointment? At two o'clock, Doctor. Good. One more thing. Don't tell anyone about my method or the way in which I'm treating you. Oh, I promise, Doctor. My friends, I don't want to bore you with technical terms. Frank is not incurable, but he is very ill indeed. And it is high time he be placed in specialized care and under continuous observation. Is he so ill, Doctor? I'm sorry. We may have to send him to a special nursing home or a home for observation. Oh, no. It, uh, it just so happens that I'm writing a book which deals specifically with this kind of case. Otherwise, I would not have had the time. Indeed, I have become so interested that I would like to spend a few days here with you so that I can have the time to devote all my energy and attention to Frank. <laughs> will you personally... We didn't dare... Yes, us. yes. I will personally take care of Frank. I am... Equally somewhat surprised by the turn of events. But the extraordinary characteristics of a patient require extraordinary methods. If you know what I mean. Taking into consideration my new method, which is to observe not only the patient, but his milieu. I would therefore like to stay with you. Of course, I must ask you to grant me certain privileges. Of course. Whatever you wish. Oh, thank you. I should like to receive some of my other patients here, especially one most interesting case. But of course. I, I'll, uh, I'll you going to have a maid to get the room ready, Mr. Vanderbilt? Get... Will you please see Frank to his room? Huh? Huh? Did you see, Doctor? Did you see? Huh? Huh? Look at him. Huh? <clears throat> <laughs> I must. Make a phone call. Dr. De Vries. Yes, I must phone him. <laughs> I mean, I, I must phone my rooms. Uh, <laughs> Dr. De Vries, what is really wrong with my brother? I don't know. I don't want to bore you with technical terminology. Besides, I don't think you'd understand anyway. But why don't you try me? I'm very interested in psychology and psychotherapy. I've studied it, and I've read a lot of books. Oh, interesting. I've also read your books, hmm? Dr. De Vries. Oh, oh, you have. Are they in there? But why do you become so agitated? You know them, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. I, I only want to sign a copy for you. Your books? They're in my room. Oh, oh is a pity. Just one more thing, Dr. Yes, Dupree. Of course, but do hurry. I must telephone. Haven't your methods changed quite considerably since your last book? Oh, yes, of course. My methods are continuously changing. That's, uh, that's why I'm such a brilliant psychiatrist. Uh, uh, cigarette? No, thank you. I know it's funny, but 
Do you know when you walked in who I thought you were? No, who? It's strange, but I thought you were an actor. You look like... Of course I'm an actor. We all act all the time. So, you are an actor. No, Peggy, I said I act all the time. If you're so clever in psychology, you should know that you also act all the time. Don't you? You also wear a mask like everybody else. A mask? Another time. I thought you studied psychology. You should know that we all use different tests. Remember I told you that I use different ways of approaching people so as to shock them. <laughs> they don't know that I'm the great Dr. De Vries, and their reactions show me in which mental state the person is. Oh, I see. Now do you believe that I am Dr. De Vries? Yes, and I'm very happy that you're here. That's good. I'm also very happy to be here. I don't quite know how to say this. But it's no coincidence that I have all your books in my room. Yes, and? It was I who persuaded my father to call you in, Dr. De Vries. Yes, and? Your books have done more for me than anybody else's. I've so much wanted to meet you. Is that so? I should very much like to see these passages that have done you so much good. Would you go and fetch the books? Later, you are going to stay here, aren't you? No, go now. It's important for my study of the patient's milieu. <laughs> but you have to telephone. Heavens, that's right. Oh, but there's one thing you must explain to me immediately. Of course, if I can. I've been wanting to ask you this ever since you came here today. Well, what is it? Why do you reject the concept of libido as a force of variable quantity? The concept of uh, uh, libido as a force of variable quantity uh, uh, must be rejected. This is the only point on which I disagree with you in all your writings. But my dear Peggy, this is ridiculous. What is libido to do with quantity? A quantity that has to do with iron, coal, something heavy. But libido... <laughs> do you even know what libido is? Oh, of course. Then explain. Libido is... Well, it has something to do with a vital urge, a sexual impulse, a desire. <sighs> something to do uh, that is not a scientific explanation, not precisely at all. Uh, desire is not libido. Libido is not desire. Otherwise, we should have used desire instead of libido, or vice versa. Peggy, if you can't even precisely define libido, how shall I explain to you why I reject the theory? Peggy, I would like to talk to you, but not about my profession. I find you very sympathetic, and I would like not to lose this feeling. But what else will I discover that you can't even understand the most primitive and elementary psychological terminology? Oh, come. It is rather going to do some more of my tests. Uh, but first, I must telephone, if you please. Oh, <laughs> professional secrets. Uh, sorry. As you wish. Dr. De Vries, please. He's not in. Oh, that is a pity. Could you possibly try to contact him? Yes, yes, it's, it's very urgent. Uh, uh, you will try to contact him. Oh, that's good. This is Van der Moon speaking. Yes, yes, but that's exactly it. He mustn't come today. No, under no circumstances. Something has cropped up and... Yes, 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 I'll phone him tomorrow and, and make a new appointment, all right? So you will tell him not to come here. Right, thanks. If not, uh, we'll just have to tell him this then. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, die lijn is hulle weet nou nie wat is die rechte muziek. Why must then, madam, I have a drink that's up? 
Billy, love yourself a dog. Cheers, Millie. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Cohen. Oh, is that Meneer van der Merve? Dis my Jeffrey van der Mul hier so. Is my kal al regal asseblief? Kan nie dit na die huis spring? Oh, dankie, baie dankie. Tot ziens. Sorry, Millie. Oh, forgive me, Doctor. I'm probably being quite unreasonable to ask you, but he's not too seriously ill, is he? Not at all. You don't know anything about serious illnesses yet. The case I'm expecting now, he is seriously ill, even a dangerous case. What's wrong with him, if I may ask? Do you know what he believes, the poor man? What? He believes that he is Dr. DeFries, that he is me. Good God. And if you contradict him, he becomes like a raving lunatic and violent. Oh, and he's coming here to our house? Yes. Millie! This is where we started talking about him. I must quickly see the others and warn them. Millie, please ask the master to come here. Yes, master. But, Robert, you've got to help me raise the money. They've got some doctor here. I already fooled him once with some stupid stories about being mad, but I can't go on with it. No, no, I can't tell my father. You know what he's like. He'll kill me and it'll probably kill my mother. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I, must I play mad for the rest of my life? Must we call Frank, too? Uh, not yet. This is a very delicate matter. I have tried to free myself of all my other onerous duties while in the house, so that I can concentrate wholly on Frank. But I have a very serious and intricate case whom I expect at any moment. I will also need your help. Is he violent? No, not necessarily. He's quite harmless, really. We're not disturbed. He has a completely abnormal libido quantity and a ruined subconscious. His characteristic is that he believes himself to be Dr. De Vries. What? Not so. Poor man, for Dr. De Vries. Uh, yes, quite shameless, too. And I believe he enjoys being Dr. De Vries. But as long as you're not Dr. De Vries and successfully pretend to be Dr. De Vries, that's enough reason to make one happy. But when the counterfeit is uncovered, the results could be involved, if not fatal. So we must reveal nothing? By no means. And who does it take you for? <laughs> it's quite interesting, really. He pretends that I don't know myself, and I play along. My assistant greets him, and introduces me as a patient to him, him being Dr. De Vries, of course. I then try to treat him without his noticing it. <laughs> Millie, please don't go. I want you also to listen. Yes, yes. And have you been successful? Well, without being too cynical, I can quite honestly say that I look forward to learning an immense amount from him. But how it will all end, I don't know. Of course. That's him now. Have you all understood? Yes. You too, Millie? Yes. Yes, Open the door. Go on, it's all... Just a minute. Perhaps it would be best if you introduced me to him as Frank, your son. In these surroundings, it might be most acceptable to him. Now, keep smiling when he comes in and says, I am Dr. DeFries. No, Mr. Gatsaba. Millie, no, Millie. No, Mr. Gatsaba. Act as Dr. DeFries. Ek is Dr. De Vries. Als ik je verwacht. Waarom staar je daarmee zo aan? Ik kan weggaan en die niet zo verkies. Oh nee, nee, dokter. Ja, bij gelukkig dat je gekomen bent. Maak jezelf thuis. Ja, maak jezelf thuis, dokter. Nou ja dan. Wat skeer je thuis? Ik ben blij dat ik gekomen ben, dokter de Vries. Kan ik de patiënt alleen zien? Uh, oh, uh, uh, take dokter de Vries into the study, um, Frank. Certainly, uh, uh, father.
نه به خود بخند دی سناد دکتر مرا کوم خانه فر دبلنگس پروسس د سال 14 دا ودی سو ان خان دکتر ایک هو می ساف دوپ ستل ای فور ایک سو دوپ کان تو بی می لیس نا ان ستلک ستا ور ایمان لانگس می ون می کیک dan weet ik niet wat er in ek is nie die een wat sit of die een wat staan en voor het ek kan besluit kom maar een ander een wat die ander twee dop hou en die derde een is ook ek en so hou dit aan en dan kom maar een vierde en een vijfde en een zesde en elke een is ek en dan kom daar nog een by wat allemaal tel en een is ook ek en daar kom nog een by en wat kyk goed tel en een is ook ek en ek kan nie meer so anno nie dokter ek kan nie by bly nie ek verbrokkel Doe nou met my wat die sykundige sy doen, dokter. Wat is Zanzibar? Excuse? Zanzibar. Is dit een eiland, een nasie of een restaurant? Een eiland. Seventeen. Mausoleum. Is dit een insekte doder, een praalgraf of een vloerdekking? Een praalgraf. En wat is Socrates? Gordelroos, blomsoort of Griekse filosoof? Griek, gordelroos. Wat is dit? Dit is een vrouwse hoed. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, dit is een vrouwse hoed. En dit is een blinde derm. En dat is een kreef. Ja, 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 dat is Zonder ster. Och, dat is goed. Dat is paar goed. Uitstekend. Dat is een woud. En dat is een leerput. En dat is kopkool. En gekookte kool. Uitstekend. En hier. Wat zie je hier? Sneeuwbedekte berghang. En dat is wit rook wat uit het toneel komt. En dat is laken en dat is melk. Verkeerd. Wat? Jij hebt gezegd tonnel en niet tonnel niet. Mensen tonnel. Ah, maar anders dan ze ze krijgen niet waar niet. Ja, 17 maart 1, 14 maart 1, 3, 4, 7. Ah, is dat slecht? 3, 4, 7, ah. Waarom heb ik je gestraand gedroomd? Gedroomd? Dank u dokter. Dank je, ik dan aan gedenk, maar het weer vergeet. Natuurlijk. Natuurlijk, dokter. Natuurlijk moet de mens voor dromen uitvragen. Een interesting reaction. Have no fear. Everything will become better. Not today, not tomorrow. But it will become better. Believe me. Put your trust in me. It all comes because you can't sleep. There are, of course, means of curing sleeplessness. Can pillar, can alcohol, Geen beter met ons nie. Jy moet jou slaap, jy moet jou slaap van binnen af beveg. Jou vrees, jou vrees is dat jy nie saal kan slaap nie. En jy moet jou bevry van hierdie vrees. But, but, what does one do instead of taking tranquilizers? Not only are you afraid before you go to bed that you won't sleep, but even before that, you are afraid of the fear that will come and the terror that will follow. Boerderaad, nie boerderaad, nie. Jy moet nie slags ons nachts bekommerd leer dink, dat jy nie in die slaap geraak nie. Maar nie, jy moet leer dink, drie, vier, sewe, aha. En nou kom die wonderlijke welkome, strelende, soete slaaploosheid. Want sterk begeer, bly slaap weg. Maar nou kul jy slaap. En soos lete, kom slaap, soek strelend. Zo, maar je hebt mij amper ander kan die stiks gedruk. En je is trip. Ja. Wat gaan mij slaap geworden jou aan? Wie praat door slaap? En ik moest door slaap los het gepraat. Zo moest je niet houden meer. Hoe kom? Dat moet ik voor Eva vragen, dokter. Ik heb van jou onder een jouw dromen gevraagd. Oeh, ja! Ik, 
Ik zit in een bioscoop en kijk naar een print over een Zuidpoolexpeditie. Schielijk zie ik mijzelf op die doek. Ik is op kantoor, bij mijn lessenaar. Maar ik uh, werk niet. Net bezig om een toebroekje te eet. Dit smaakt slecht. Ik spoeg het uit. Pff, uit! Nou ja, nou is alles voor mij duidelijk. Hoe kom je niet dadelijk zo gezegd? Nee? <laughs> Wat is nou voor die duidelijk, dokter de Vries? Jij is een gebied van eeuwigdurende ijs. Ijs is koudheid of kalheid. Jij klaar oor koudheid of kalheid, maar wat een soort. Daar kan men net een soort wees, want je praat ook oor een doek. Een doek is een laken en een laken betekent een bed. Jij lei aan die kalheid van jou metgezellen en jij zoekt vertroosting in een roze. Maar, je hebt ook geweten dat ik gaan kom. Mijn naam is De Vries. Jouw Zuidpooldroom is dus dubbel gedetermineerd. Die Zuidpoolgebied van jouw droom betekent erotische kalheid en betekent ook nog meer dat die bang is voor rijp. Vriespunt, verwijt, De Vries. Nou ja. Hm. Nou, voor die lessenaar motief. Die oorgang van die Zuidpoolconcept tot die lessenaarconcept is baie eenvoudig, vooral als je denkt aan die formule tafel en bed, wat precies voorstel, waar je eet en slaap. Je is bezig om een toebroodje te eet, dus brood. Aan je lessenaar verdien je je dagelijkse brood. Maar je haat je werk, daarom heb je brood een slechte smaak. En zo so verraai je die feit dat je geen bevrediging vindt aan tafel of in die bed niet. En hoe kom je niet van je brood niet? Waar werk je? Bij ons op mijn vaders kantoor. Ah, nou heb ik dit, nou heb ik dit. Kijk, jouw naam is Van der Mul. Hm? Van der Mul betekent van die meulen, van meulen afkom meel en van meel maken bij ons brood. Die brood van je toebroekie. Nee, alleen het symbool van hoe dat je jouw leven verdient, maar weer eens dubbel gedetermineerd van jouw vader. Maar je hebt jouw brood uitgestoeg. Dus gaat je jouw pa en wel. Geet aan, mijn geheime ontleed, dokter de Vries. Maar wat doen ons nou? Nou, in jouw geval zal het niet van baie lange duur wees nie. De behandeling bedoel ik. Daar jou toestand tamelijk gereelmatig ontwikkel en al die abnormale tijden ei aan een soortgelijke conditie openbaar. Dat is bemoedigend, dokter. Maar uh, hoe gaan jy mij behandel, uh, als ik mag vragen? Nou ja, ik zie je twee keer een week kom bezoek. En dan? Ons voer een paar toetsen uit. Is dat al? Jij vertel me omtrent jou droom, hè? En is het al? Oh, voor al dit. Maar misschien ook nog een paar associatieproefnemings. Uh, wat voor soort ding is dit? Uh, Idee-associatie. Ik vraag je wat er idee verschillende woorden bij jou opwekt. Zoals bijvoorbeeld? Uh, bijvoorbeeld om binnen die uh, uh, perken van jou uh, Zuidpool ervaring te blijven. Ik zeg misschien uh, Pool. Waarom laat dit jou dek? Wat zeg je mij, dokter? Wat is dit nou alles met ziekte te doen? Ik weet maar braan van Iberoep af. Maar voor mij klinkt dit meer naar een gezelschapsspel, zoals Rai Rai. Een sober die mij gezond maakt. Hier te maar recht en nog gouder is wat jij denkt. Want jij is een verzet. Uh, ik is een wat? Een verzet, een weerstand. Oh, en nogal zo gauw ook. Gewoonlijk komt het eerst na jaren van behandeling. U is een bijzonders en bij een interessante geval. Veel geluk. Ik is dus een verzet. Ja. En is dat goed? Het is perfect. Verschoon mij, dokter. Maar ik begin nu denken dat ik niet al die varkens niet hok het nie. Heel te maar recht. En als ik nou enthousiastisch begin word oor die theorie? Nou, dat zal ook goed wees. Dus, dus onmogelijk om je te beledig. Nou maar klaar. <laughs> Kijk, laat ik iets verduidelijk. Zet, zet. Nader, nader. Een psychoanalyse betekent alles altijd die teenoorgestelde. Ons noemt dit ambivalentie. Dit betekent die gelijktijdige bestaan in één persoon van teenoorgestelde gemoedstoestanden. En die, ach, laat ons niet verder tijd moos met technische termen en begrippen. Maar, uh, maar kom ons doen een associatie-experiment. Ik zei bijvoorbeeld, uh, Paul, waaraan laat dit jou denken? Paul... Politiek. Tik, 
Tik. Tik. En er staat ja gaan aan. Nee, zo voor wie was ik niet. Ja, maar je moet. Anders kan ik jou niet helpen. Waaraan laat Tik jou denk? Hier ging niet om niet. Nee, alles is belangrijk. Tik laat mij aan iedereen, dokter. In Engels is het mos. Tik. Tik. Daar is wat. Wat is daar, dokter? Niet waar niet. Inderdaad, ja. Maar het hoort niet zo de wees niet, dokter. Nou, wat kan ik daaraan doen? Ik dokter net veranderen. Denk je het is makkelijk om dokter de Vries te wees? Voor mij is het niet te moeilijk wees niet. Maar je moet meer verstandig leven, dokter de Vries. En als je me zou toelaten om te zeggen, hier is slaaploosheid van je. Je moet jezelf bevrijden van je vrees. Je moet... Ja, ja, mijn vriend. Ons zal volgende keer daar wel praten. Ik moet nou gaan. Het is jammer, dat is alles zo leerzaam voor mij. En wanneer kom je weer? Oh, maandag, diezelfde tijd. En hoe lang is die behandeling duur? Oh, drie tot vier jaar. Maar ieder dag gezegd dat mij uh, weerstand bijzonder gauw... Juist, en daardoor zou die behandeling van zo korte duur zijn. Drie tot vier jaar? Is dat kort? Oh, bijzonder. De meeste van mijn patiënten behandel ik al... Voor die zeven jaar. Ja, maar mij zal het gauwer gaan. Ja, ons zal zien. Ja, ons zal zien. En nu moet ik met jouw vader gaan praten. Is het werkelijk nodig om honden? Dat is mijn plicht als dokter. Is het niet beter wees om het uit te stellen tot een staande week, niet dokter? Beslist nee. <laughs> nou ja, moet dan niet uh, te bekommerd wees voor zijn gedrag, niet dokter? Ik, ik bedoel, die, die zeer moet het toch uh, ergens erf, niet waar, niet? Vader? Vader? Uh, meneer van der Middel, uw zoon is ziek, maar u hoeft niet te bekommerd te wezen, niet? Uh, ik, ik versta hem goed, uh, maar Afrikaans hebben we How long have you been in South Africa? You should have learned Afrikaans a long time ago. Psychologically, a man who does not learn or thinks he cannot learn another language shows a lack of determination and has a definite inadequacy in his psychic functions. Oh, that's good. That's uh, very good. Yes, I'm unfortunately in a very great hurry. Oh, well, don't let us keep you, Dr. De Vries. Well, I'll come again next Monday and uh, we can discuss your son's illness in more detail. Oh, very good, Dr. De Vries. Uh, uh, good day. Good day. <laughs> uh, good day. What a relief. Oh, I feel much better now that he's gone. Well, me too. Have you made any progress? Uh, well, you could call it that. I've gained some information, but he... Uh, oh, it he seems he... to be a very serious case. Oh, well. One can recognize that immediately. When one compares him with Frank, you can see that Frank's state isn't so bad. Oh, yes, yes, we're very lucky. But I must go and talk to Frank. I admire you. Oh, why? Because you play your part so well. Oh, what do you mean? What the way you call me father. <laughs> and how you acted as if he were Dr. De <laughs> <laughs> Do you find it difficult? Oh, not at all. Uh, but let's go and see poor Frank. I don't know how to thank you. Forget it. I'm only doing my duty. You have your profession, I have mine. Mine is to cure people. <laughs> you don't have to thank Henry Ford for producing motor cars, do you? If ever I can do anything for you... Count on me. Oh, thank you. I remember that. I, uh, I may have to. Anyway, now I must go and see Frank. I'll send him down to you. Oh, oh thanks. Frank! Frank! Whew. Hello, Doctor. Steps not too hard? <laughs> not so hard as your cop, Neil, Mark. Of course, I'll work. That's my business. I thought the patient sat down and the doctor walked up and down. Only at the first visit. With the second one, he changes. Now, quiet. Only I ask the questions. Two times two? Four. Seventeen. No, no, four. Quiet. Eighteen plus seven is? Twenty-five. Forty-nine. Twenty-two plus thirteen? Uh, Thirty-five. What's this? A sheet of paper. What does it make you think of? Nothing. Nothing at all. What do you think of when I say, Paul? Paul, please. Aha! What? 
It's my business. Go on. Paul, police. Paul. Uh, polygamy. Thank you. Now tell me, tell me what you dreamt of last night. Does it mean anything bad that I thought of the police? No, polygamy is worse. What did you dream last night? I was at a nightclub. I was dancing. And suddenly the pianist got up and stopped playing. He said he was very tired. He'd been working all night. Well, I, I was very cross. The waiter asked if I wanted any coffee. I said, no, I didn't want any. And then, um, I, I can't remember anymore. It's enough. It's all clear. You're dancing. You are interrupted because the pianist has treated you in a cold manner. Dancing is erotic. You are therefore suffering from the erotic coldness of your partner, and you seek consolation in a neurosis. At a nightclub, you sit at a table, and the association a table bed is obvious from the sleepy expression on the pianist's face. He is as white as a sheet. A sheet means bed and bar table. Also, you knew I was coming to see you. My name is De Vries, Frost. Your dream is therefore doubly determined because the pianist treats you in a frosty way and you become cross. Therefore, you are afraid of me. Now, the coffee that you will not drink, that signifies that you hate your father and that you want to kill him. That's true, but how in God's name do you know this? That does not concern you. No, I have the right to know. If you can explain to me how cold affects table and bed, then you can also tell me why my refusal to drink coffee means that I hate my father. If you like, I'll explain it to you. What happens to the coffee beans before we drink them? They are ground in a mill. What is your name? Vandermill. What does that mean? From the mill. Therefore, when you rejected the coffee, you rejected your father. It's all so simple. If you mean... I don't mean it is so, whether you like it or not. Yes, but... No offence, Doctor, but... It was so different this afternoon. This morning I thought you could help me. I, I was full of confidence, but, but what you're doing to me now... Well, go on, don't be embarrassed. It, it confuses well, me. This makes you furious and you find this childish. Well, to be honest... Bravo! You reject everything I have done today. Yes. Then I can help you. You are in resistance and you are as well as back on the way to normal. What? How? Already? Yes, there are such unusual cases. But only this morning you said I, I was seriously ill. Yes, but that was this morning, and then I did not know all that I know now. My behavior was completely irresponsible. How could I have changed so quickly, just because I know that two and two is four? Oh, no, you are still ill, but you'll soon be cured. What do you call soon? Two or three years. As long as that? Oh, that's all right, then. There are many people who are never cured. Only death releases them. So, two or three years? Probably. Ah. And, uh... Will you visit me every day? As long as it is necessary, until a propitious moment. Hmm? No, no, I will not tell you when or what that moment is. Am I disturbing you? We've just finished. Frank, would you like to come to town with me? Oh, maybe, if the doctor will let me. No, no, Frank, no. How do you feel? Oh, well, life's not easy with our doctor. Why? Well, if I obey him, it's good. If I oppose him, it's still good. He's in resistance. He's in what? Resistance. Dr. De Vries. Do you want to pretend that a patient can already be in resistance after only two sittings? Why not, Miss Vandermill? He is a most unusual and exceptional case. I'm beginning to think so, too. Do you think I would forsake my practice for an ordinary, everyday case? It is exactly this early antagonism and resistance that intrigues me. It's incomprehensible. Well, what's incomprehensible? Forgive me. Frank, you know that I've studied psychoanalysis and that I know what I'm talking about. And it was I who advised Father to call in Dr. De Vries. But the Dr. De Vries can say that a patient is already in resistance at the beginning of the second treatment. But that's what he said. Honestly, he said it. He's standing in front of you and he's still saying it. Well, we'll see what you have to say tonight, Dr. De Vries. I'm going into town to buy your latest books and some others on the same subject. Then maybe we can find out the truth. Hello, radio taxis? Uh, could you send a car to 5A Jubilee Road? 
Uh, right away. Thank you. Even uh, we won't see much of the door in any case. Dear yeah, Van Gogh. It's pronounced Van Gogh, darling. It's a bit out of place in this collection. You can see the influence of Gauguin and Van Gogh. Look at the bold strokes of colour. Bold strokes of colour? And Are you gentlemen interested in paintings? This is a late Van Gogh done in the Gauguin style. Actually, you can notice a little more Japanese influence. Japanese influence? Listen, there's no time to waste. Have you got the dough? <coughs> uh, the colour here, not so bold, is it, huh? <laughs> Now listen, your time's up. If you don't deliver today... The IOU goes to your dad. And then it's over to you, son. But listen, I, I never signed any IOU, you know that. Anyway, I, I was too drunk to write that night. Get out the sob stuff, kid. You pay up, I will disappear out of your life. Until the next time. I think art can only be appreciated when it's seen in its proper surroundings. Now, when I was in Florence in the Uffizi... Marmelifi! The course in Italia, a souffle au leaf oli. In my life. Oh, my God, my aunts. Of course, Rodin in Johannesburg isn't quite the same as Rodin in Paris. Ah, Paris. Gay Polly, daar het een man in dag van mij gezegd. Jo haar was van de moene. Get him. Come on, fella. Now listen. Now you listen to me, baby. You phone us where we can pick the door up tonight. Or tomorrow. <laughs> what a Charlie. <laughs> he does know he's been taken for a ride. <laughs> Good job I did on his signature. He'll, he'll never know. Not even his own man. <laughs> Excuse me. Could you gentlemen tell me what this is all about? Just a mirror, pal. Just a mirror. So, that's their little game. Neurotic symptoms, um... <sighs> Neurotic symptoms, Oedipus complex, components of instinct. Hello, Dr. DeFries. As you see, 
I've also got hold of this book of yours. And I've bought some others. And when I've read them, I'll be able to argue with you about your resistance theory. Oh. Frank? Uh, uh, hello, Doctor. Uh, I think the fresh air has done me a lot of good. Come here, Frank. Oh, I, I'm glad you feel better. I, uh, I want to talk to you. Uh, Peggy, would you excuse us for a few minutes, please? Mm. Come, Frank. Frank, I have a feeling that your short walk might have done you more good than you realize. Lie down. How much is three times three? Nine. Twelve times nine? 108. Who is Michelangelo? The Italian Renaissance sculptor. Who is Rembrandt? A Dutch painter. What were you doing in the art gallery today? I had to... Oh. Oh. I, I had to buy vegetables. Painting's a vegetable. I'm a vegetable. Yes, and the IOU you did not sign is also a vegetable. It's all right, Frank. I also looked at pictures today, and after you left, I heard them say that you did not sign that IOU. But why didn't you tell your father? No. Frank, no. wait. Tell me, why didn't you tell your father? My father. He would have been so mad, he would have killed me or thrown me out of the house. Dr. De Vries, I, I don't even know what happened now. I went out one night. I got drunk. Pull yourself together, Frank. We may still have to explain to your father that you pretended to be ill so that you could claim to be irresponsible. You've got to help me, Dr. De Vries. What am I going to do? I have to find 2,500 grand tonight. I've thought of everything. And pretending to be sick seemed the easiest. You've got to help me, Dr. De Vries. I am not Dr. De Vries. Are you going mad too? Neither of us is mad. Do I am is not important at the moment. We've got to get hold of that IOU. Now, let me think. I know. Phone those three germs who caused your illness and tell them to meet you tonight at 9 o'clock at the Seven Masks Club in Hillbrow. And I promise you, you'll have your IOU back ten minutes later. What about the money? Don't phone first. I'll tell you about the money later. Now, go on and phone. And don't forget, the Seven Masks Club, Hillbrow, 9. Go on. Go on and phone.
Done a double cross and beaten it through the back. Hey, Will, you better go and see where Bill is. I'll look after this one. Ach, old Paul, you don't need bus quite to get out. Is there anything we like to And as Bob will be like this, it's a man's enough for him. You can listen, eh? Order us some grub. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me <laughs> Look, you have the right sir. I, I, I must just. It's okay. It's all right, sir. It's all right, sir. You may be safe. Waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, could you bring another? But this one doesn't work. Yes, sir. You can't trust people, can you? Hadn't you better go and have a look? You make me so mad I could squeeze a grape. Pardon. 
Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't worry. They are taking a long time, aren't they? <laughs> Come along. Better get weaving. Let's go and have a look. You first. No, you first. I've been watching you. Frank! I don't think he can hear you, so he's... Dr. DeVries, will you explain? If this is some more of your shock treatment... Father, I keep telling you he's not Dr. DeVries. He's an imposter. He brought Frank here. He is not Dr. DeVries. Oh, Peggy. I am Dr. DeVries, I've expected. Oh, yes, Dr. DeVries. That's right, please. Thank you. Peggy, for heaven's sake, let me explain. You will have a lot of explaining to do, Mr. Whoever you are, but not to me. Father, have this man arrested. He's not Dr. De Vries. He's not a doctor. Tomorrow, friend. Yes, all the is no it's in it. And here is all your papers here. You have to make a Wat kan ik voor mijn paas zijn? Laat je dit maar aan mij hoor. How can I ever thank you? Don't thank me. I think I may still need your help. <laughs> Frank, come here. Father, he brought Frank here and all those gangsters. I tell you, you must have him arrested. I've telephoned the real Dr. De Vries. He should be here at any moment now. Dr. De Vries, I think we'll have to treat my daughter too. First she brings you into the house, now she doesn't even recognize you. <laughs> Frank, my boy, how are you feeling? Oh, a, a slight bump on the head, Father. I'm completely cured. It'll never happen again. Will it, Dr. De Vries? I must say, I can't quite uh, keep up with everything. Now that you've cured Frank, Dr. De Vries, uh, now Peggy seems to be... Father! He is not Dr. De Vries. He's pretending to be Dr. De Vries. He's even told Frank he's not Dr. De Vries. And why did he bring Frank here? She's quite right, Mr. Van der Milne. I am not Dr. De Vries. My name is Harry Holt and I am... Oh, look, Dr. De Vries, I know your methods by now. In any case, I don't care who you are. You've cured Frank. And if Peggy keeps on behaving like this, you'll have to cure her too. I think that'll be very easy. For you see, my name really is Harry Holt and I am an insurance agent. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Holt. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is uh, Harold Wilson. Father, won't you understand? No, not father. My name is Harold Wilson. Mr. Van der Mill, or Mr. Wilson, I don't know. But my name is Harry Holt. I am not Dr. De Vries. I'm sorry, Peggy. I've tried my best. They won't believe me. You tell them. Go on, and ask me. I have seen a photograph of the real Dr. De Vries in one of the books I bought today, and he is not Dr. De Vries. He's an imposter. I can't believe it. I've been lying to you all morning, and you believe me. Now that I tell you the truth, you won't. I tell you, I am not Dr. De Vries. I got the lunatic. Dr. De Vries, I phoned for you to come. Tell them that you're the real Dr. De Vries and that he isn't a doctor at all. Uh, allow me to apologize to you, Dr. De Vries, for this embarrassment. Apologize to me? 
On the contrary, I owe you my deep gratitude. <laughs> to me? Yes, certainly. You're a very great man. I've suffered from insomnia all my life, and this evening, acting on your advice, for the first time in my life, I fell asleep. Until your phone call woke me. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Peggy. Whether you like it or not, I am a great doctor. But, Peggy, won't you understand? You keep quiet. But I'm only trying to explain. You can explain later to Father about your lies, but he... Miss Vandermoel, Mr. Vandermoel, I am sure this whole thing can be explained. Won't you sit down, please? Come along. Please join us, Dr. De Vries. Thank you. Dennis, get us a couple of bottles of champagne, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dr. Harry Holt will never be able to explain so perhaps you will allow me. When Harry came to me in absolute despair this morning, I told him about my theory on wearing a mask. To me, the most interesting surface on all the earth is that of the face of the human being. But we need a mirror to see our own. I held up that mirror to Harry. And you, you helped him to look into it. The mask is... Ah, you're talking about masks. Now, the usual concept is that one wears a mask to dissimulate. Another theory is that, like the Eskimos and the Dogons, people wear masks the better to reveal themselves. But by dissimulating his face, uh, by dissimulating his face, a person breaks off a certain communication between himself and others. It is true that for those who wear masks, these chosen masks all allow them the possibility of access to a different world, one which otherwise they could not have entered. The mask, my friends, is the mediator par excellence. Oh, you're right, Dr. De Vries. I couldn't have wished for a better mediator. But I think once the wearer of the mask has rediscovered his own personality, his real face then demulsifies. <laughs> <laughs> Friday the 13th. Sorry, Father. That's all right. Looks as if we're going to have a doctor in the family for a long time. Well, it wasn't such a bad Friday after all. <laughs>